I'm going to be ranking 10 more undrafted players in the NBA today, so get ready for some exhilarating stories of relentless determination in part two of our series displaying undrafted sensations. Welcome to D-Flow Hoops. If this is your first time here and you're a passionate basketball fan craving for rankings, breakdowns, and all types of entertaining NBA content, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Number 10, Matt Thomas. Despite tragedy early on in his personal life, losing his father to suicide when he was just 11 years old, Matt persevered through his childhood to ultimately lead Onalaska High School to a Division II state championship in his junior season. Going into his first college season, he ranked one spot behind Zach Levine for the 51st ranked recruit. Unfortunately, then at Iowa State, Thomas averaged under six points per game in his first two seasons, which included getting a DUI in his sophomore year. So even after Matt stepped up his play to close out his college career, in 2017, NBA GMs had questions about the sharpshooter's past. He went undrafted, clinched the summer league title shooting eight of nine from three, but still no team signed Thomas. So he signed in Spain's Liga ACB, where with his second club team, Valencia, he led them to their fourth ever Euro Cup, was second on the team in scoring, and had an effective three-point field goal percentage of 99% when left wide open. That earned him the nickname Mr. 99%, and his play gained the attention of Toronto's savvy front office. Nowadays, the Raptors rookie snipers had limited minutes, which is why he's not ranked any higher, but has been damn efficient in the time he's been given. Number 9, Kent Bazemore. Now on his sixth different team, the Kings are 10-6 since picking up the veteran guard. Flashing back to 2012, Bazemore's last college season saw him shoot the lowest percentage of his four-year Old Dominion tenure. And despite winning CAA Defensive Player of the Year in his junior and senior season, he went undrafted, but spent the summer league on a squad next to Klay Thompson, Harrison Barnes, and Draymond Green. However, his first few years in the Bay were spent carving out a reputation as a barely playing, frenetically enthusiastic bench guy, and especially after a 23-game 2013-14 season in LA where he suffered a torn tendon, it didn't seem like Kent's career would last very long. In an early fall signing, the Hawks gave him a chance, and he's displayed his solid shot-making but scrappy defensive repertoire which has kept him on an NBA floor ever since. From 2015 to 17, he helped ATL complete a mark of 10 straight playoff appearances, which had been active since 2007. Flashing forward, and Bazemore was just traded for to be a piece that gets sacked down to those very playoffs. Number 8, Maxi Kleber. Following five years in the BBL, it'd take another three years overseas for German product Maxi to get a chance in the NBA after going undrafted in 2014. Then similarly to Matt Thomas, Kleber's Euro Cup tournament performance gave him the attention he needed to get an NBA opportunity as he made the all Euro Cup second team. But unlike Mr. 99%, the opportunity was an unguaranteed contract where Maxi had to earn his way to receive a legit roster spot in training camp. Not only did Maxi make the team in 2017, but he appeared in 72 games while averaging over 16 minutes per game and being an integral piece to Rick Carlisle's system. Jumping to his third season in the best pro ball league in the world and Kleber's boosted his points per game in each season and in the modern three-point shooting style of the NBA, his game as a stretch big is a perfect fit for it. Number 7, Alex Caruso. Winning SEC All-Defensive Team Honors at Texas A&M as a senior in 2016 and becoming the school's all-time leader in steals and assists, gained Caruso's name little traction among front offices. He spent one full season on OKC's G League team, was then scouted by the South Bay Lakers, played two years up and down from LA and the minors, dunked on Kevin Durant, before finally this past summer getting his guaranteed deal with the Lakers. As I mentioned last Thursday in my Laker video, Caruso's a top statistically valued defender at his position, and that's staggering considering after high school, he was ranked the 100th best recruit entering college, and of course went undrafted entering the NBA. Number 6, Daniel House Jr. He was Caruso's teammate at Texas A&M, and it seemed House was never going to find security in the pros. Throughout the first three seasons of his career, Daniel played up but mostly down between the G League. In 2016-17, he signed a two-way deal and played one game in Washington. The next year, he signed the same type of contract in Phoenix and played 23 games. Each of those contracts were one-year deals, and Daniel wouldn't sign another two-way contract until December of the next season, this time with Houston, and finally in March, House Jr. had his contract converted into a standard NBA deal and Daniel was ready to capitalize. 
He shot over 45% on around five attempts each night for the rest of the season, which led to a three-year $11 million extension with Houston on June 30th. And for the efficient 3 and D presence for over 30 minutes he brings to the table in 2019-20, that contract seeming like an absolute steal for Houston. Next is your top five, but quick shout out to A Dude who mainly credits LeBron and AD for his reasoning that the Lakers are winning the West, but also the fact that no other team has a roster complete with veterans like they do. Top comment on the question coming up gets next video shout out. Last year's winners, hang tight, you'll receive your rewards in the very near future. Number five, Dorian Finney-Smith. The theme of four-year college players being overlooked continues in our second undrafted ranking, and Finney-Smith was all SEC second team with the Gators in both 2015 and 16. You'd think an elite, experienced college player with an accolade like that in such a tough NCAA conference would get a guaranteed chance in the NBA. But after getting unselected in 2016, the two-way forward Dorian was picked up by the Mavericks, where he'd have to fight his way onto the roster through training camp in the preseason. Smith did just that. Dallas savagely stuck with him through tough shooting stretches in his first two pro campaigns, and now the 26-year-old's one of the toughest wings to score against in the league today. Number four, Royce O'Neal. It was his teammate Joe Ingles featured in my last undrafted list, but kudos again to Utah's scouting department in finding another overlooked gem. After entering the draft in 2015 from Baylor University and being passed on, O'Neal played a year apiece in Germany and Spain. He then signed a contract in late June of 2017 to play in Lithuania, however the contract had exceptions, allowing Royce to play for the Pelicans in the NBA Summer League, where the Jazz front office realized he was NBA caliber and gave him a shot, signing him to a multi-year deal. In under a year, O'Neal went from expecting to play overseas to contributing over 10 points while making half of his shots in the second round of the playoffs, stunningly making his NBA dreams reality. Today, he's one of the smoothest, most timely three-point shooters in the league and a more than competent perimeter stopper. Number three, Seth Curry. Overshined by the chef most of his life, it's time for us fans to seriously start giving sniping Seth the respect he deserves. Out of anyone you've seen ranked today, no one's faced a tougher journey to make the NBA than him. The bad luck for Seth started right out of high school. Liberty University was the only school to offer him a basketball scholarship, who in 2019 just made their first NCAA tournament. After averaging over 20 in 2008-09 with Liberty, Curry then transferred to Duke where a toe injury forced him to be a redshirt sophomore and not finish college until 2013, but as a senior, he put up 17.5 points per game, including making 43.8% of his three-pointers, but Seth's only path into the league was through a training camp slash preseason deal. He did appear in six preseason games next to his brother in 2013. Then he was waived by the Warriors and Curry's next two seasons would go on to be spent in the D-League, and it would take Seth averaging 24 points playing with the Pelicans Vegas Summer League team in 2015, coincidentally just like our last ranked Royce O'Neal, but that's where Curry would shoot the lights out and earn a guaranteed contract with the Sacramento Kings. Fast forward to 2020, and in Seth's second stint with the Mavericks, he's averaging career highs in percentages, is second in league-wide three-point percentage, and in his last 10 before an ankle sprain was averaging over 19 points per game. Number two, Daniel Tice, currently sixth in league-wide defensive real plus minus. After the All-Star break, the Celtics centers averaged nearly 14 points over eight boards on 62.8% from the field. Nearly seven years ago, Tice was an early entry candidate into the 2013 NBA draft after playing four years professionally in his home country of Germany. Nothing came from it, and in 2014, he went back to his home country and won the BBL Best Young Player Award, which followed by Tice pursuing an NBA roster spot with the Wizards Summer League team. It didn't pan out. Daniel again returned to the BBL, where he led his team to his first ever German League championship, re-signed for a couple more years, then won another two titles with B-Rose Bamberg. He's gotten significantly injured twice since signing in Boston in 2017, but Daniel's catching and finishing in the paint, as well as his seamless ability to space the floor out with jumpers, are starting to become qualities as dominant as they were for him in Germany, and he's proving me wrong so far for saying they should have traded for Drummond. Number one's next, but before you comment who was snubbed, go see the 10 players ranked in the first version of this list, and also realize this is a list of undrafted players currently in the NBA. Honorable mentions to the most highly considered Celtics backup point guard Brad Wanamaker, 
who helped Tice win two of his titles in the BBL, playing seven seasons overseas after going undrafted out of Pittsburgh in 2011. Now he's the NBA's leader in free throw percentage and a valued Celtic role player. And quickly, another four current players who were undrafted four-year college players in the valued 3 and D wing for the second-seeded Nuggets, Torrey Craig, Speedy Wizards guard Ish Smith, smooth up-and-coming scorer in San Antonio's Brent Forbes, and the currently injured but still deadly 14-year veteran J.J. Barea, who'd maybe be one of the greatest undrafted players of all time, which is a list potentially for another day, but this video ranks current value. Number one, Christian Wood. Detroit's big man outstandingly is right in the midst of the very best players at his position in real plus minus and more than earns the number one ranking. Woods recently also starting to take over games with his versatile scoring and rebounding consistently just drool over the man's beastly numbers in his last 10 games. For Christian, the road wasn't always as close to being this smooth though. It was in fact a damn rocky trip to becoming a legit pro, projected to be a late first round pick in 2015's draft after leaving UNLV following two seasons. He spent three seasons playing a combined 123 games in the minors with the Sixers, Hornets, and last season the Bucks G League team. For the Wisconsin herd, he averaged over 29 points per game. During that time, Christian was waived by, of course, Philly, Charlotte, and Milwaukee, but also a team in the Chinese Basketball Association as well as the Pelicans last July. But Woods built himself into one of the top breakout players this season, running with the chance the Pistons have given him and is due for a big payday this summer. For next video, shout out who's your favorite player on this list and why. Keep watching some of my other content and leave a thumbs up on this one if you enjoyed. This was your boy D-Flow. I'll see you next video.